if you're willing to make some really hard choices, it might be more feasible for you to be a stay-at-home mom than you think. Hey everybody, it's Becky. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a video about a topic that you guys have asked me about quite a bit, and that is how we afford for me to be a stay-at-home mom. I've been a stay-at-home mom now for a little over 14 years, and it definitely is something that I never thought that I would get to be, even though it's what I always wanted to be. Um, and I wish I had like a formula. I wish I could say, well, you do this and this and this, and then you can be a stay-at-home mom. I know a lot of you guys want to be stay-at-home moms or you want to be a homeschooling mom and you just can't or you don't know how to go about it. So this video, I'm gonna share with you guys kind of how it happened for us. I know it's different for everybody and everybody has a different amount of money they need to live on each month. So we may make more than you. You may make more than us. I don't really know. I'm not gonna get into numbers or specifics but it's just the general idea of kind of how it worked out for us and some suggestions I have that if you wanna be a stay-at-home mom that maybe work, would work out for you. So the first thing is my husband is in sales. A lot of people ask me what he does. He is in sales, he is commissioned only. And it is a very scary and volatile business to be in. It wasn't our first choice for sure. So he was actually in retail management when we met and when we got married that's what he did and then about a month after moving into our first house and we had a young baby uh, he lost his job so i was already not working because i was staying home with our daughter and you know we hadn't really talked long term about how long i would be able to stay home we were just kind of taking it as it as it went and as long as we could afford it and at the time it was working out okay i mean we had a modest house it was very small it was actually a townhouse um and we had a lot less expenses then, you know, my car was paid off and just different things. So it was working out at the time for me to be a stay-at-home mom. We didn't know how long that was going to happen. Well, we bought our house thinking, you know, we can afford to move out and get our first place. And he lost his job. So he had to have something. So when a sales position came up, we were very scared because it was commission only. And, you know, he had come from a salaried position before. So it's pretty scary to go from a salaried position to a sales commission only position but it was all he could get at the time and so he took it and we took it with the mindset that it was just temporary until he could find something else well now here it is about 12 or 13 years later and he's still in the same line of work so and in sales and commission only it is definitely a lot of ups and downs and there have been some very bad times and some very, very good times. But whether times are good or bad, I still handle money the same way. I still save by doing coupons and rebates and price matching all year long, no matter whether I have a million dollars or two dollars. Like I handle money the same way. I also do whatever I can to keep our monthly expenses low. And I talked about that in a different video about really how you can negotiate with your utility companies and your credit card companies and all these people that you're paying money to you really can negotiate with them to get better rates and lower your monthly expenses that way. So whether times are good or times are not as good, I still handle that the same way as well. I'm always looking for ways to save money on everything. And then I'm also always thinking about and trying to put more in our savings account so that I have a cushion that if something were to happen and he were to lose his job again or we would have some kind of injury or illness, I really do try to put money in savings, whether times are extra good or just okay or whatever. You know, and that savings account saved our bacon. Uh, I think that's a Southern expression. So if you don't know what that means, it just means our savings account really saved us when the economy crashed. What was it been now, eight years ago? I don't know how many years it was. But really the money we had in savings was all we had to live on for a little while because he was not making hardly any money at all. And of course I wasn't making any money. so. Um, we really, really relied on that saving. So it is really, really important to do those things, whether you are, both of you are working parents or you're just trying to think about how you can be a stay-at-home mom, really focus on ways that you can save money all the time on every single thing that you spend money on. So kind of along that same line, accord, affording to be a stay-at-home mom really is a mindset just as much almost as it is about money. Now, not always. There are some people who literally could not make it with one income. But I think a lot of us could probably afford it if we changed the way we lived our life. And if we made sacrifices that may need to be made 
in order to free up some money to be able to have one parent stay at home. So if you're willing to make some really hard choices, it might be more feasible for you to be a stay at home mom than you think. So you really have to sit down, like first of all, how much could you afford to live on each month? How much do you need for your basic bills and expenses? Really sit down and figure that out and then decide together, you know, what, how much money do I want to have in savings maybe before I quit my job and be a stay at home mom? You know, whatever you have to do, sit down and figure out what you're willing to do without and what sacrifices that you're willing to make in order to be a stay at home mom. And that's different for everybody. So like, this is something I was telling my girls recently. We were disgusted because we love our house. It's plenty, you know, good enough. It's what we need. It's in a safe area. It definitely meets our needs, but you know, there's always things that we would like to have. I would like to have a bigger backyard. I would like to have bigger closets. You guys have seen my girls or my youngest daughter's closet, especially they have very small closets. You know, I'd like to have bigger closets. I would like to have a flatter driveway so the girls can actually ride their bikes in the driveway. You know, there's several things that I would like to have. And I would like to have, I want to be in a neighborhood, but I want to be a little bit farther away from people than I am now. Sometimes I feel like my neighbors are just so obnoxious and I just wish that I was farther away from them. So we wanted to move. So it's not that we didn't have enough money and we got approved for way more than we should ever have ever tried to buy. And we didn't, you know, luckily we are smart enough to know that just because the bank says you can afford something doesn't mean that you're comfortable doing that. And our payment right now is very comfortable. You know, we can pay that very easily each month. Don't have any issues with that. And we have a certain number in our mind of, you know, what we're willing to pay for our mortgage and not a penny more. And so the number that we are willing to pay in order to not stretch things too far um, was not worth moving for. You know, we live in a very overinflated town, you know, house, housing market wise. The land here is very expensive and the houses that they build here, even when they're not that big, cost a lot more than they would in other towns. So it's hard to move when you're at the kind of middle of the range like we are now and make a significant step up without doubling or even tripling your monthly mortgage payment. And that wasn't something that we're willing to do because I do want to live comfortably in other ways. I do like going to Panera every day. We do like going to Disney once a year, you know, and having a big trip in the spring. I do like being able to go shopping and not have to be on a literal, literal like penny pinching budget. I am very frugal and try to save money but I also like not having to stress out over every little thing. And I like to eat out and we eat out a lot. And so I knew those are things that I am not willing to give up just to have a bigger house that I don't really need anyway, if that makes sense. So that was something that we decided, you know, fine, we'll stay here a few more years, see what happens. It's fine if we never get to move. I'm happy here. It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make if that means that I can stay home with my girls, homeschool my girls, and still, you know, have the life that we wanna have with trips and things like that. So. Those are all the decisions and priorities that we have made and put in place for us. So you may have to do the same thing. That may mean you would have to sell one of your cars and only have one car. Or it may mean that you may not get to ever eat out, but you are willing to not eat out in order to save money to stay home. Everybody has what they will and won't do and what they will and won't sacrifice. And so you would just have to figure out, you know, what you're willing to do to make that happen. So you could give up your cable and only have like Netflix for $10 a month versus how much you might pay for cable or satellite. You could cancel your gym membership and work out at home. You could stop eating out and cook at home all of your meals or you could um, sell some of your stuff and live a little bit more minimally. You know, whatever it would take and whatever you're willing to sacrifice to make being a stay at home mom work for you is what you may have to do, but you have to decide what's it worth to you, how bad do you want it and what you would need to give up and sacrifice in order to make that happen. Another way that you can become a stay-at-home mom is to figure out ways you can make money. Even if you get to be a stay-at-home mom and even if you're doing okay with your finances and your expenses, you know, there are always ways that you can make more money from home. I know it sounds like easier said than done, but there are ways you can do it. You can babysit, you can dog sit, you can be a dog walker, you can mow yards, you can open an Etsy store if you're crafty and you make things. You can start a YouTube channel or a blog. There are so many ways to make money from home that you just have to be creative again and kind of brainstorm of what you can do. What talents do you have? What free time do you have during the day or the week that you could do, you know, dog walking or dog sitting or something to do to make money. And even if you try one, two, three things that you think may be a, another stream of income for you and it doesn't work out, that doesn't mean give up. You know, I sold Tupperware for literally like five minutes. It didn't work out. 
I did 31 gifts for a while. It didn't work out. You know, there are so many things you can do that they may not work out, but that's okay. You keep trying until you find the thing that you're good at, that you love, or just that pays the bills. There are things you can do. And ask around people that you know that have um, jobs, like managers of places. Like I know a couple years ago when the, when the economy crashed, all those years ago, I had a friend that was a manager of a Fazoli's. And so he would let me come in at night after I tucked my oldest into bed, my husband was home. I would go at night and close and clean up the restaurant and clean the bathrooms and wipe the tables and vacuum and do all that stuff just to make a little bit of extra money. I also planned the kids night for Fazoli's at that same time. I did that from home. I would plan the craft and bag everything up and take it over there. And sometimes I would even sit there on Tuesday nights and you know, cause they have kids night every Tuesday and they would have a craft and I would sit at the table and help the kids do their crafts. I mean, there were all things that I kind of thought outside the box to do to make a little bit of extra money to really help out until things got better. So there are definite ways you can make money. There, there's tons of like at home, work at home scams, but there are just as many, if not more legitimate ways to make money from your home if you're willing. So think outside the box and decide, you know, what are you willing to do in order for you to be able to be a stay at home mom? So that is kind of my story in a nutshell. You know, I never wanted to be a career woman. You know, I did go to college and I got my degree, but I never really wanted to be a career minded person. God has blessed me in ways that I didn't even think to ask for. I never thought that I would ever get to be a stay at home mom, even though that's really all I ever wanted to do. My mom was, and even when she worked, they worked from home. So like, I always remember her being home, my mom and dad both. And I really wanted that for my kids. I really just wanted to be a stay at home mom. But I thought realistically, I'm like, that's not gonna happen. You know, we didn't have a lot of money when we got married. We actually lived with my parents the first few years that we were married and you know it just was not something i ever thought that would be in the cards to be able to be a stay-at-home mom for even as long as i have been and then the fact of being able to homeschool on top of that has been an amazing blessing so god has blessed me in ways that i didn't even think to ask for he has given to me and I really, I know, I know that a lot of you guys want to be stay-at-home moms, and I, I don't want this video to come off like, well, just make some sacrifices and cut your cable, and you'll be able to be a stay-at-home mom. I don't want it to seem that way at all, because I know that it's not always easy, and it's not always possible to be a stay-at-home mom. You know, some people, they just cannot afford it. I just wanted to share this with you guys to kind of explain how it worked out for us, how I try to save money all the time, whether we have tons of money or not as much money, you know, I still treat money the same. And it is about sacrifice and giving up certain things that you would have to give up maybe to be a stay-at-home mom, just to kind of get that ball rolling and thinking in your mind, you know, what could you change? What could you do to be able to quit your job and be a stay-at-home mom and be able to afford it? So I hope it was helpful. I really, really hope it is because I know so many of you guys want to be, and I know it's so important to so many of you guys, and I know it is such a blessing to be able to be a stay-at-home mom. And I want you guys, the ones that want to be stay-at-home moms, I really want you to be able to do that. You know, even if it's not for another year, two years, five years, these are things maybe to start thinking about that you can try to start implementing now that may be something that would enable you to be a stay-at-home mom in the future. So I hope it was helpful. If it was, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video. If you want to see two of my older videos, you can click the links right here. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, if you haven't already, and you definitely should, you can click right here. I upload every single week. I have some links in the description box for some of my favorite stores and products, as well as my PO box address. Check out those links if you're interested in those, and I will see you guys in the next video.